Hello, everybody. Welcome to Blue Sky's presentation. Uh, today we'll be talking about uranium. Uranium is a, a like uh, the previous presentation, uranium is also a very hot commodity today and one that's uh, very much in short, short supply and projected to be in short supply for some time. Um, as Gilbert mentioned, we are uh, active, uh, we are exploring in Argentina. What we have in Argentina is not just a single new uranium discovery, but the discovery of an entire new district, a district that uh, spans over 145 kilometers long. And as we'll see in the presentation, has the potential to be like these big, uh, large uranium producing districts in Kazakhstan that are amongst the largest in the world and with some of the lowest operating costs. Um, here's a disclaimer, just a note to everyone that's listening that there will be some forward looking statements made throughout this presentation. Now, as I said at the opening, uranium is uh, has been increasing quite a bit. Uranium is up. It was a couple, just a couple of years ago, was under twenty dollars. It's in the mid forties right now, and it's projected to go much higher. A lot of that, and I'll, I'll give a little more detail as we go on. Another thing that we'll notice uh, throughout this presentation is a very unique business opportunity for Blue Sky in Argentina. Argentina is a nuclear country and has a need for nuclear. Uh, uranium uh, fuel. So this is a, we are trying to set up a blue sky to be the, one of the first suppliers of that uh, uranium. And the project itself is actually quite, besides, you know, the economic parameters around it, the project itself, we already have established a floor value of, we've uh, got a deposit just under 23 million pounds of uranium and 11 and a half million pounds of vanadium. But the real upside here is that this entire 145 kilometer corridor is open for expansion. And that's the stage that we're at right now. We're drilling out. And as we discover additional uranium, that's where the real value here for Blue Sky is going to come in. Because as I said at the outset, this has the potential to rank amongst the largest uranium districts in the world. And we'll see that. Just quickly here, moving on, just to show you a map of Argentina here, the southern part of South America. And uh, where our project is located is in the province of Rio Negro. It's called the Amarillo Grande project. And it's that big yellow blob basically there. Um, there's over 300,000 hectares of property that make up the property, that make up uh, Amarillo Grande. It's truly uh, an enormous project. The company uh, management is provided by Grosso Group. Uh, Grosso Group management are experts in exploration and they're pioneers in Argentina. Uh, we have been active in Argentina since the country opened up for exploration back in 1993 and opened up for investment in exploration in the mining industry. And we've been very successful with other companies in Argentina. We have made four major discoveries, including the producing, Guacamayo Gold Mine, the producing Chinchillas Silver Lead Zinc Mine, which we took from discovery all the way up into production uh, in partnership with SSR Mining, and the discovery of the Navidad Silver Lead Deposit, which is the world's largest undeveloped silver property. And of course, the Amarillo Grande project, which is the project that we're speaking about here today. Um, to lightly touch, on some key members of our management group. First of all, uh, introduce Joseph Grosso. Joe Grosso is the, of course, the president and founder of Grosso Group Management. He is a very well-known person in Argentina, extremely well-respected in the mining industry, been recognized as a pioneer, has been inducted into Argentina's Mining Hall of Fame and was Argentina's Mining Man of the Year. Guillermo Pensado, who's also going to be presenting shortly, uh, is a uranium specialist uh, geologist, and he too uh, just recently was awarded Exploration Geologist of the Year by his peers. And the one other person I'd like to bring your attention to is Mr. Chuck Edwards. Mr. Edwards is an engineer and uh, um, mining processing engineer, rather, and a metallurgist. Um, he was the chief metallurgist for chemical for many, many years an extremely well-known individual, worldwide respected, and we're actually you know, really honored to have someone of his caliber on our team to do all the uh, engineering work for our, pro our project. Just to step back a little bit, I won't spend too much time on this. 
Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uranium supply and demand. The demand of uranium, as you can see on this chart, has been on a steady increase since uh, 2018. Uh, we're, it, we're seeing that continuing to go up. There are many reasons for the price of uranium going up. Number one is, is the lo for long-term rise is the global acceptance of nuclear reactors as a safe, secure, and reliable and carbon-free uh, way of producing electricity. So we're seeing nuclear reactors being built, uh, you know, in China and around the world, uh, manifold. And the other thing is the supply certainly cannot keep up with the demand uh, for for this new uranium. So it's not like you can turn the switch on and get more uranium. Uranium is harder to come by, and of course, uh, it needs higher prices for some of the mines to make it work. We see here in this slide, just very briefly, that the almost half of the world's uranium comes from Kazakhstan. And the reason for that is Kazakhstan has a very low cost of producing uranium. And we'll see what our similarities are to, to this region's uh, producing mines. And just again, how uranium is priced. You cannot, of course, trade uranium on a, on a stock market or, or on an exchange. Uranium is really uh, priced uh, privately between uh, a nuclear reactor and a mine. Uh, so they you typically have a three or maybe up to 15 year contract to be able to supply them for with a continuous uh, flow of uranium. And the price is typically 30 or 40% higher than what the spot market is showing. And Argentina, as I stated at the beginning, Argentina, most investors don't realize is a nuclear country. They have been in the nuclear business since the early 50s and they're involved in every aspect of the nuclear cycle. And they're actually quite well regarded for that. What they don't have is domestic uranium for fuel production. Currently, they have to import all the uranium need. It comes uh, and they pay a premium for that. They play upwards of $65 to $70 a pound. So uh, as our project is advancing, ours currently is the largest and most advanced in Argentina. And we have the opportunity to set up Blue Sky to become Argentina's first domestic supplier of uranium and then to become a net exporter after that. And with that statement, I'm going to pass off to, Amario, to Guillermo, who will give a, a very brief overview of the project itself. Guillermo? Hi, Nicolas, thanks. Um, hi, everyone. And I will try to summarize in very few minutes uh, the technical part of this tremendous project, which is Amarillo Grande. Next, please. So this district was discovered uh, by Blue Sky Uranium back in 2006 in a province named Rio Negro province. This is the northern portion of the Patagonia, south of Argentina, uh, a country with significant uranium potential, but underexplored, uh, where we found uranium mineralization for a huge corridor of more than 140 kilometers uh, showing a mineralization on surface and defining several targets until we defined it in 2017 and the southernmost sector of this district, uh, the more significant potential to test this target uh, to see if we could define a potential economic deposit. And this was discovered back in 2017 name it Ivana Deposit, where we advancing rapidly with metallurgical studies and an economic uh, preliminary assessment. Next, please. So first of all, the location of the project, as I mentioned, is a Rio Negro province. This is a province with good nuclear experience. They have many companies and devel nuclear developments in the province. So this is very important as well as that is a province uh, developing natural resources as oil and gas and mining. So it's a mining friendly jurisdiction. And although you can see a huge desert there, uh, you still have very good infrastructure, uh, but with low density of population and very low rain, which allowed to work year round. Next, please. Nico. Yeah. Okay, so the mineralization, as I mentioned, 
uh, is basically from surface because we define it this in new district with mineralization on surface. This yellow mineral in the upper picture is carnotite, is a uranium vanadium mineral, which is coated in pebble or in the very fine material of unconsolidated or poor consolidated sediments. But all these mineralization observe it on surface for kilometers and kilometers along this uh, mentioned trend. Uh, what is represented is the superficial expression of a bigger and more significant uranium system, which is a sandstone type deposit with many similarities. Next, please. Yes, we can go to the next. The interesting thing is that the geology of this district have many similarities to Kazakhstan district, uh, which is the main producer today uh, of uranium. Uh, and they comprise several uh, or multiple deposits in this district due to the size and the type of deposit, with some of them as huge as Inca mine with more than 200 million pounds uranium. At Amarillo Grande, we are just initiating our exploration and we already defined one, what we expect to define multiple deposits as observed in, in other uranium districts like this one. Next, please. Once we define the mineralization and the main target as Ivana, we focus to delineate resources and we achieve almost 23 million pounds uranium and 11 and a half million pounds vanadium, which is a good credit for the deposit. Next, please. The other important thing was to recognize if uh, this deposit could be expanded, something that we are actually doing with more drilling and the just few results received at this point encourage us to prove that we can increase this deposit uh, and advance this uh, project into a PFS probably at the end of this year. Next, please. The other important thing for the deposit was to prove that we can recuperate the uranium of that mineral type of mineralization. And we found we, that it would very simple and using very well-known technology, we can recuperate almost 85% of the uranium and plus 53% of the vanadium as a credit uh, with a using alkaline or pre-concentrating and alkaline leaching uh, representing low environmental impact, a very low cost technology. Next, please. The other thing that we had to prove before going into a preliminary economic assessment, we want to see the type of mining and demineralization here is from surface, just on surface, or a few meters below surface, down to 25 to 30 meters in depth. So finally, what we are thinking is that this could be mining with an open pit operation or sun or sediment quarry uh, that you can very easily, with no drilling and blasting, neither crushing, you can operate uh, reducing your operating costs. Next, please. So using all those numbers, the volume, the capacity to recuperate uranium and vanadium and the type of potential production, we went into a preliminary economic assessment that Nico is going to summarize for you. Thank you, Guillermo. So yes, so we did a preliminary economic assessment even at this very early stage of the project. And the reason was with uh, the price of uranium under $20 a pound, we wanted to see, do we have already something that is potentially economic at the $20 uranium price? or and, and it would help us make the decision whether we should be continuing to sink more money to expand uh, the current deposit that we've got. And what we found was uh, we really focused on two uh, key metrics. Number one was, what does it cost to actually build up to put something like this into production? So if Ivana, we wanted to put into production, we determined through the PEA that it would cost about $100 million plus a $28 million contingency fee. That's an important figure because as you'll see, the, the other surrounding targets that we're looking to develop satellite deposits, uh, that number isn't going to change very much. It's going to remain relatively fixed. So it's a good number to keep in mind as a reference. The second number, of course, that we looked at, what does it cost to actually extract a single pound of uranium out of the ground? And what we determined that the cash cost, the PEA stated is just over $16 a pound, or if you include all in sustaining costs, it's just over $18 a pound. 
So these numbers look very attractive at that point. But to really put this into perspective, what we did is we took the numbers from this study and we plotted it on the red bar here shown in this chart and compared it with other producers around the world to see how would Ivana rank if it was into production. And what we see, it, it's, it ranks amongst the lowest cost producers, the first quartile in the world. So if, if Ivana was in production, it would be amongst the lowest cost producers. Interesting to note that many of those other mines surrounding where that red bar is are all based in Kazakhstan. So we're on to something very significant here, something that could be potentially very economic. The next question, of course, from a business point of view is, can we find more? And that's exactly the stage that we are at right now. Let's step back and look at the whole package of the 145 kilometer length district. Looking at this, of course, we've spent the last 15 years exploring this and understanding the surface expression and where uranium was occurring. But if you look at number one there, which represents the Ivana deposit, of course, the first thing to think is there's probably ability to expand uh, the uranium deposit, the, the Ivana deposit in itself. So we have a 3,500 meter drill program that's going on right now. And as we'll see, we already started announcing some slides, giving us confidence that this is going to expand. And uh, so that's underway. And the second thing, of course, is to focus on the targets that are nearby to the Ivana deposit within about a 30 kilometer area so that we can have satellite deposits that can be operated with a, that single fixed capital cost. So targets two, three, four, and five on this map represent those targets. And we have a 4,500 meter drill program that started and is going to resume again next month. So this will continue over the course over the next, uh, I, I guess until the end of June. And these, this map here, it, it, there's a lot to see here, but it really shows that the results that we already announced, we announced 20 holes out of this uh, drilling program that we have underway on the Ivana deposit, to which step out. And we're seeing that we're getting uh, good intersections of uranium and vanadium. In fact, the averages in many cases are higher than the resource that we published. So there's a good possibility here that we're going to be expanding the size of the current resource. And the, the drill program, this represents the drilling that was done outside uh, on the other targets, the Ivana North, and we're going to be resuming back to this uh, at the end, sometime in next month. And we'll be continuing to uh, have constant announcements of drill results. And the whole purpose of this, of course, is to see can we find more Ivana type deposits and increase from go from 23 million pounds, want to go to 50, 60, 70, wherever it takes us before we start to engage in a pre feasibility study in the second half of this year. So, as we've seen, just to conclude quickly, this is a a very easy, a very unique project. It's got easy access. We got great provincial infrastructure. We have a country and a province that are involved in a nuclear industry, making it very friendly to work there. We have a geological setting, characteristics very similar to Kazakhstan. We have uh, uh, just under 23 million pounds of uranium and 11 and a half million pounds of uranium already identified. The PEA that we study that we did establishes is potentially viable. And with the drilling work that we have underway, we have the potential to really expand this and to see and to test its potential that it can rank amongst the largest in the world with some of the lowest operating costs. And with that, happy to take anybody's questions. Thank you, guys. So a couple of questions here. The first one coming from Jason is asking, does Argentina have a history of mining or exploring uranium is, or is it brand new for them? Uh, the question, the answer is yes, and I'll let Guillermo give the details. <laughs> yes, Argentina has been in mining operations since 1950s, just a few years after the United States, until the end of the 90s. Uh, but since then, since the end of the 90s, no more mining operation. The point is that the country has very good experience of, uh, and have the regulations to operate uh, mines uh, with uranium. So that is very important and significant for a uh, development project in, in Argentina. Okay, the next question here from Raymond Arrow is asking, is it easy to separate uh, vanadium from U308 in the deposit? Yes, as I mentioned, the mineral that comprise the both uh, metals are carnotite, it's a uranium vanadium mineral. And when you leach 
carnotite, you leach both uranium and vanadium, and you can precipitate both separately. And both elements or metals are 100% imported today in Argentina. So you have local requirements to, to fulfill with a potential future production. Okay, one last question here from Donnie. Uh, what's your comments take on France's new plan for nuclear power, if you follow other countries' plan? Or France's new plans? I'm sorry? Yeah. In, in nuclear power. Well, France is a nuclear country, and uh, France is uh, probably one of the country with some of the lowest carbon footprint. They're a big advocate for uh, nuclear energy. And uh, I think France, uh, you know, through Orano, uh, are, are building nuclear reactors around the world. And, you know, I'm not sure they were, they were at some point involved also in Argentina. I don't know if they have an interest to go back to Argentina. Guillermo, do you know any more? Well, they, they were in the past, and the Argentina have very good relationship with all, I mean, actual director of the Atomic International Nuclear Energy is an Argentinian today. So we maintain very good connection and relationship with every nuclear country in the world. Okay, thank you, Nicholas and Guillermo, for answering all the questions here. Thank you for your time. Great, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Man.